Good morning. My name is Christian Taylor and I'm the tech director for CityGate Church. I hope you guys are ready for a great time of worship and a powerful sermon. I have just a few things to share with you before we jump into our service. First, we are now offering closed captions for our services so you can follow along in noisy environments. To enable closed captions on Facebook for web, click the gear icon and flip the switch to turn closed captions on. To enable closed captions on YouTube for web, click the CC icon on the player controls. You can also enable closed captions watching on your phone or tablet. To do this, in the Facebook app, look for the ellipsis icon, which is three dots, or look for the gear icon, and try pressing both, and look for something that says turn captions on. Please note that some users, including myself, have been having some problems turning on closed captions in the Facebook app. So if you're unable to find a setting to turn them on, or if it's just not working, I would recommend watching the stream on YouTube. We'll have the YouTube link in the chat so you can go over to the YouTube stream and do the same process. Look for the three dots, the ellipsis icon or the gear icon on your phone or tablet and turn captions on. Captions have been working very reliably on YouTube and the YouTube app, so that is definitely the best way to watch the service with captions on. Next, I've got a quick update on the My Sermon Notes app. We recently added a new announcements tab that will let you receive important updates from CityGate. In order to access this new tab, you need to make sure you are on version 2.1 of the app. To do this, launch the My Sermon Notes app, tap the profile icon in the bottom right corner, and tap About App. If your version number says 2.1, you're good to go. If your version number is lower than 2.1, please be sure to update the app on your phone. To update the app, open your phone's browser and enter mysn.app slash download. The link will go to My Sermon Notes on the App Store or Google Play Store, and you can tap the Update button to get version 2.1 of the app. That's all I have for you guys today. If you have any questions about closed captions or the My Sermon Notes app, feel free to message me on Facebook or email me at ctaylor at citygatechurch.us. Now, I'm handing it over to Jeff for the announcements. Enjoy the service. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. I'm so glad you could join us this morning. My name's Jeff Henley. Uh, my, my wife, Terry, and I have been going to church here for around four and a half years. I'm an elder in the church, and uh, we look forward to meeting you when all of this is over with. Uh, you guys will absolutely love our church. Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there watching today and all you mothers that go to church with us. Happy Mother's Day. Um, I know that the good Lord selected each and every one of you just like he selected his, the mother for his child, Jesus. I know he took special care with mine. I want to take just a second. This is my mom, Agnes. Hi, Mama. Mom left us in 2009, but she left me with a lifetime full of memories and a heart full of love, and she made me the man that I am today. Thank you, Jesus for selecting the mothers that you did. Happy Mother's Day, all of you. Guys, if you hadn't got out there and done it, please get out there and download my sermon notes. There's a small um, little personal information tab you've got to fill out once you get it downloaded. But we've got announcement tabs on there, upcoming events, past sermons, awesome tool, you'll love it. How you guys digging the closed captioning? I hope you're all enjoying it. If you're having any issues, reach out to Howie or myself. We'll get you in touch with Christian. I'm sure we can figure this thing out, but I, I think it's a pretty cool tool. Online giving. Guys, within your My Sermon Notes app, there's a little tab down there, giving. Please, give with your hearts. We couldn't begin to be who we are here at CityGate without each and every one of you. Thank you so much. The good Lord will bless each and every one of us for giving the way that we do. Thank you for what you do. Let's take a second and just reach out and remember to call and check on everybody. I know that they're lifting some sanctions and folks are starting to move quite a bit, but let's don't forget to pick up the phone and call and check on everybody. You never can tell when a phone call will come in right on time. Let's talk about our first responders real quick. 
Let's cover them with prayer. It's still a pretty sticky situation out here at times. You know, we just had a job site that closed down over the weekend. You know, we had a couple of guys that tested positive um, for coronavirus. So please, a lot of folks out here that are still in a lot of danger. It's not just your stereotypical first responders, even though we all need our prayers. So please cover us all with your prayers. And guys, while we're talking about prayers, how can we pray for you today? Get out there on your prayer request tab. Download those prayer requests. We have a prayer team that will stop and pray at the drop of a hat. Remember, get out there and pray. Get out there and request your prayers. If you don't mind, guys, bow your heads and let's pray. We'll get you on to some music, and I promise you it's going to be an awesome sermon today. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today, and Father, we thank you for each and every one of these women that you selected for our mothers. Father, these women have all taught us so much. My mother has a very special place in my heart, just as my wife does our children. Father, thank you for the women that you selected as our mothers. We wouldn't be who we are without them. Father, I want to. I just want to lift up our our folks out there that are having to go to work. Father, I just I pray for protection. Cover us, Father. Protect us. Keep us safe. Father, I lift up Howie. Let his voice ring true today, Father, and let your word speak out. Let it touch each and every one of us. I pray for our church. I pray for our congregation. And Father, if there's anyone out there right now searching, let them hear your voice. Let them hear your word today. I can't think of a better time than right now, Father, to accept you into our hearts. Father, lift this church. Continue to guide this country, Father, and give us wisdom. We ask you all these things, and I pray all in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I love you guys. Happy Mother's Day. See you soon. Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at Savior and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will In the light of His glory and grace <clears throat> Through death into life everlasting We passed and we followed Him there Over us and no more hath Dominion for more than conquerors we are, and turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace his word shall not fail you he promised believe him and all
His perfect salvation to tell And turn your eyes upon Jesus And look full in His wonderful face And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Thank you, Daryl. Great job. I love that song. Well, very special day today. Glad you guys are here. Welcome to church. And on this very special occasion, I must say, Happy Mother's Day. So glad you guys decided to be with us today. I'm excited about our sermon today, and I'm going to get into that here in just a minute. But I wanted you guys to watch this video. I love these, these guys that do this. They're called the Skit Guys. And I just love this video. And I just want you guys to take a minute, watch this video. You're going to love it. Watch this. So what'd you get, Natalie, for Mother's Day? Well, nothing yet. You know it's tomorrow, right? Yeah. Oh, we have this thing. I take Hayden to the drugstore. He picks out something he thinks his mom would like. <laughs> so cute. You should see her face when she opens those gifts. So last year, I got batteries and this. <laughs> what is that? No idea. But I love the expressions that they make when they think that I'm using the gifts that they bought me. She loves that thing. And you know the best part? Drugstores open 24 hours a day. Hey buddy, wake up. We gotta go shopping. You forgot Mother's Day again, didn't you? Mine's a little more complicated. Unfortunately, I married into her family's long tradition of epic Mother's Day gifts. Bill? A new car? And now Mother's Day just makes me sweat. A diamond tennis bracelet? She doesn't even play tennis. France? France! Man, you really overthink this Mother's Day thing. I had a really great idea for Mother's Day this year. Daniel was gonna make this great card, then the glue spilled, and the glitter spilled, and it spilled all over the dog, and that dog will never be the same. And as much as I try to explain to Dave that my father's just making up for years of being absent, but he still completely stresses over Mother's Day. And then, then I just panicked. I ended up buying her an eat-weeder, a feed-weeder. Weed-eater? She likes to garden. I cannot give my wife something that eats weeds. Why can't I stop sweating? Calm down, my man. Hello? Just think of a gift that reflects who she is as a mother. That's a problem. There is not a gift out there that would even come close to show her what an amazing mom she is. What kind of gift says... No, no! <laughs> Something about nail polish? <laughs> got it. Got it? I got it! <laughs> you just shot me. Oh. Mom, have you seen my... Got it. How are you? Buddy? 
Could you tell me more about God? <sighs> you got it. <laughs> Thanks for waiting. They let me go today. But it's okay. Right. God's got this. God has blessed me and the kids, this wonderful woman. How do you wrap that up and put a bow on it? She is the gift. <laughs> hey. I heard you loud and clear. You love and appreciate me. That's all I need. No bow required. What are, you, what are you talking about? <laughs> you pocket called me. <laughs> Sweaty. Oh, my, no. <laughs> Hello? Hey, babe. I mean, we're still good with that whole drugstore thing we got going on, right? Ow. Still there? <laughs> I absolutely love that video. And the reason I laugh is because far too often in my mind, I want to be like the first guy. But in reality, <laughs> I wind up being too much like the second guy. Can I get an amen from the girls out there? The guys think they got it one way and it's actually another way. Just putting it out there. Sorry, fellas. I'm on the same boat with you. Today, I want to talk to us about Mother's Day and what a mother actually is. I had an entire another sermon put together for you today. And I wanted it to be over the top and... It just didn't work out. I had it prepared. I was ready to, to, to come and record this morning, and it just wasn't it. I called my dad, and with 50-plus years' experience, I said, Hey, Dad, I've had to scrap my whole sermon because I'm just not feeling it. He laughed and told me, he said, Son, I've been there more times than I care to count. But when I get stuck, I like to use my mind and I like to, to let things change up a little bit. And he said, I like to write an acrostic of things. It helps me to get a better perspective of it. That phone call lasted every bit of about two minutes. And I knew it was one of those points in time that was ordained by God. This is what came out of that. Mother. The M is for Mender. I can remember as a child, my mother would sew clothes and make clothes for our family. I had no idea that we were poor. <laughs> I thought everybody's family made clothes and did those kinds of things. But I remember how proud I was when my mom would make me certain things. I remember her laying out on the floor with the simplicity patterns and pins everywhere. She had the little bracelet thing with the stick pin holder on her wrist and from time to time pins would lay in the floor and people would step on them and you know it wasn't a great day that she got to mend that too. But my mother was a mender. I watched my grandmothers mend people, relationships, families. I watched my wife with my sons speak to them and mend them when they were wounded or when they were hurt. A mother is a mender. The O is for only one. We only have one mother. A child has one mother. A mother can have many children. 
but a child can only have one mother. Now, I don't want to put this all on birth mothers because I know that there are a lot of birth mothers that that had to give their, their children up for various reasons. I know that some mothers weren't that kind of a mother and somebody became that mother, whether it be an aunt, a grandmother, or an adoptive parent. And that is that one mother. But there's only one that can hold that position of mother. There's only one. The T, not only is she a mender, not only is she the only one, but the T is for tenacious. She is absolutely tenacious. A mother does not quit. When I was a little boy, my dad had a newspaper clipping that came from his grandmother's mirror in her bedroom. And it said, only one life will soon be passed and only what's done for Christ will last. That was on one side. And the only other side is said, a man can work from son to son, but a woman's work is never done. A mother will be up before the sunrise and she will be up well after dark. The tenacity of a mother is that she never gives up on her children. No matter what they've done, no matter what position they are, no matter how you try to paint her children, she will always paint them in a much better light. Because it's through that that the child founds hope. And I don't want to get too far ahead of myself here. But the tenacity of a mother, a mother never backs down. I can't tell you how many times, and I know you've experienced this too in your families, that my sons would have reports or they would have projects or they would have homework of some kind and it never failed. But it was only at the 11th hour that we would find out about these things and we'd be scrambling around trying to figure out things. And I remember one time in particular, one of my sons, I can't remember whether it was Trey or Travis, but they were trying to, uh, have the prod, the, um, uh, the, the assignment was that they needed to make a musical instrument. So of course, Becky, she's running around and she hollers at me and she said, we got to make a musical instrument. We got to make a musical instrument. And I thought about something. I found an Easter egg and I went outside in my shop and I had some sand in my sand blaster and I scooped up a little bit of sand in that thing and I put some super glue around the edge of it and I made a little shaker for him. I said, well, there, there's a percussion instrument. You can carry that in there. And everybody laughed and thought it was funny. But there were other times that it wasn't funny. Things would be pushed to that very last minute. But the mother never gave up. The one thing that I thank God for is that my mother never gave up on me. She never gave up on me. To this day, she still boosts my ego. She talks to me and she tells me, man, you look sharp. I like your haircut. Have you lost weight? Knowing that I haven't. Just trying to help me because she tenaciously seeks after making sure that I'm well, mind, body, and soul. Amen. Mothers are tenacious. So the M is for mender, the O is for only one, the T is for tenacious, and the H is for heart. There is no heart like the heart of a mother. There's no love like the love of a mother. Again, whether that be a natural born mother, a bio mother, or whether it be one that came into your life later on. There is no heart like the heart of a mother. As I was writing the sermon, I was thinking back of a time we lived in Lana, Maryland. It's about 20 minutes outside of Washington, D.C. And I love to swim and I stayed in the water all the time and I got an earache. And I remember my mother being in there and holding me and me begging God to stop the pain and my mother holding me. And by the way, if you don't know it or not, a wet wash rag 
can fix anything when a mother has it in her hand. She went and got a wash rag and she wet it and she brought it in. She would wipe my brow and she held me and she rocked me. And she began to pray. And the heart that's in a mother touched the heart of the heavenly father. And he heard her prayer and he touched my body. And that's one of the earliest times I can remember God healing me. But it was the heart of a mother. Amen. The M is mender. The O, only one. T, tenacious. H, heart. But the E is for encourager. The encourager. Never quit. Never give up. That guy that goes right back into that tenacity or that tenaciousness of a mother. She's an encourager. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Recently, Melissa, our future daughter-in-law, graduated from Western Kentucky University as an RN. And the dean stood on the stage and he began to open the commencement and he said, nobody holler about for anybody, nobody cheer until this is over with. Well, I can tell you right now that Travis was sitting on one side of Becky, I was sitting on the other side, and people just kept hollering for their student. And Becky was like, well, don't think I'm not going to holler for our girl if everybody else is hollering. And when it came time and Melissa's name was called, Becky screamed so loud that Travis and I literally looked at each other. There was nothing we could do. We were done. But the people in front of us asked if she would come to their graduation and holler for her, the lady that was sitting in front of us. But she's an encourager. She's hooping and hollering, encouraging Melissa, so proud of her as we all were. We just didn't have the, the vocal capacity that Becky did. But a mother is an encourager. You can do it. Don't stop. Don't give up. You can do it. I can't tell you how many times in my life that I have been discouraged. And I had special women in my life. My dad's mother, my mom's mother, they were encouragers. My mom's mother was different than my dad's mother. My dad's mother was the prayer warrior. She was vocal. She was an in-your-face, on-fire, live-wire kind of woman. And when Becky and I found out that we couldn't have children, I, call, I called her to inform her of that. And what the doctor said, that it was impossible for us to conceive. And I'll never forget the words of my grandmother when she said, you called the wrong doctor. Start buying clothes. I got this. She encouraged me not to give up, but to trust God. She encouraged me. Now, my mother's mother, on the other hand, was just the opposite. She was more subdued, laid back, unless you got her angry. But I don't know anybody really is not like that. But it was very hard to do. But every person that ever met my mother's mother thought that they were her favorite because of the way that she would talk to people. She would encourage them to never give up and to never quit. I've watched as Becky has been with our sons and then be so discouraged about things. I can't do something. And I just watch Becky talk to them. Buddy, it's okay. You can do it. Don't give up. You can do it. I've watched her encourage them. My sons, both of them were racers when they were younger. They ran 10Ks, uh, excuse me, 5Ks, and they would run local races. And I talked to you about that before. But Becky would always be on the sideline, encourage them. You can do it. You can do it. Run faster. Don't give up. Don't stop. And that's what a mother is. A mother is an encourager. And when you lose a mother, you lose something big. The M is mender. The O is only one. T, tenacious. H, heart. E, encourager. But the R is ready. A mother 
is always ready for anything. I'll never forget a couple of times in my life. I was younger and I had an old car and I was working on it. We were living in Cleveland, Tennessee at the time and I was working on a car and I was trying to pull a piece of trim off with a pair of vice grips. And I was standing up on the side of the car literally and I was pulling to myself with those vice grips and that piece of trim broke and that vice grip hit me in my brow. I went into the wall, blood coming out. I go in the house and I call out my mom's name. She comes running. I can't see out of my eye. I literally thought I knocked my eye out. Dad come down and looked at it and he said, oh, you'd be all right, wipe it off, put a Band-Aid on it. Mama was not happy that day. She put me in the car, took me to the emergency room. I got, I got in the, the office there with the doctor in the emergency room. He wiped it off. He said, son, you're okay. He said, we're just going to put a Band-Aid on it and send you home. You know how moms just overreact sometimes. And I'll never forget, we were on Okoye Street. I was leaving Bradley Hospital, and I was heading back to our house. We were on Okoye Street in Gallup, in Cleveland, Tennessee. And I told my mom what the doctor said, and it was everything that I could do to keep her from going back and giving that doctor a piece of her mind because she was ready to fight that man. She was talking to her. She already had it worked out. If you would have had a concussion, I hadn't have brought you in. He would have wore me out. I said, but I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. I said, Mom, I'm hurting so bad. Can we just please go home? Well, if you think that's the end of the story, you're wrong. Because when we walked in, my dad said, how many stitches you get? I just kept silent. I looked at my mama, and I didn't want to say anything. Dad said, son, how many stitches you get? I said, I didn't get any stitches. He said, what'd they do? He said, they put a Band-Aid on it. <laughs> he started laughing. And then mama went after him, and that's when I went downstairs in my room, and that, the rest of it was between them. But I know that the volume level was pretty high in the house. Mamas are always ready, good, bad, or indifferent. I remember we had a neighbor that had a big Rottweiler, and the boys would be out at the street waiting for the bus, and Becky would stand on the porch and watch for them, and this big Rottweiler was out there. And that dog came toward those kids and Becky took off running, picking up rocks, throwing them, trying to scare the dog, screaming, trying to run that dog off. But no thought for her own safety. You see, that's what a mother is. They mend not only scuffed knees, but they mend broken hearts. There's only one that can do that. And they do it so tenaciously, they never give up because it's in their heart to do it. And as they do it, they constantly encourage. And not only are they ready, but they teach their children to be ready because they have the heart of God. Now I'm going to share something with you and I am not telling you this is in the Bible anywhere. This is something that I, I just feel in, my, in myself. It's something that I believe. And so I'm not preaching this to you today, but I've often wondered this, and I'm just going to share something with you. The question is this. Why is it in the Bible that we can take the Lord's name in vain and he forgives us? His son was crucified, came as a sacrifice for us, and... He forgives us for putting our sins on him. But if we grieve the Holy Spirit, if we blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, he doesn't want to forgive us. Everywhere in the Bible that life begins, the Holy Spirit is present. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Bible says that and the Spirit of God went out over the face of the deep. When Elizabeth conceived, the Holy Spirit overshadowed her. When Mary conceived, the Holy Spirit overshadowed her. I know when I was a kid, if you wanted to get in trouble with me, 
One of the things that used to every all the kids used to say were, was, your mama, no matter what anything was going on, they would throw that at you. Well, that was fighting words where I came from. And I can't tell you how many fights that I've been in because somebody said, your mama. But if somebody said something about my dad, it was more like, there he is, talk to him, he's grown. You say something about me, well, here I am. But if you say something about my mother, I want to defend and I want to protect her. The Bible says that God created the family. And when we look at the Godhead, we name them by their position. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, which creates the Trinity. If there's a father and son, where is the mother? Now, I'm not saying that the Holy Spirit is female, but I am saying that the characteristics and the tendencies of the Holy Spirit, the teacher, the encourager, the mender, there's only one Holy Spirit. And I liken that to that heart of a mother. I'm just sharing this with you today because we have more power in that thought of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit being in unity as one. We have so much power there. I encourage us not to discount the Holy Spirit. In some ways, it would be like discounting our own mothers. I want to share something with you today. I want you to look in your Bibles if you have them with you. I'm going to insult your intelligence a little bit, and I'm going to read something to you today. And it's chapter 31 of Proverbs, verses 10 through 31. Now, this is talking about a virtuous wife. And it also has the attributes of a mother. And I just want to share this with you today because this is the foundational premise. This is Solomon. He's writing about his own mother here. And he says these words. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far beyond rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her. So he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil. All the days of her life, she seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She's like a merchant ship. She brings food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservants. She considers a field and buys it. From a prophet, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hands to hold the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor and she reaches her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household. For all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestries for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates and sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies sashes for merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in a time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. That is a mother. Solomon penned that. He put that together together. And when God inspired him to write that, he looked at his own mother and he wrote those things. Today, I'm grateful.
for my mother. And I know this is not mother-in-law's day. But I'm grateful for my mother-in-law. Both my mother and my mother-in-law are wise women. They're precious women. They're loving women. They're kind women. My mother-in-law, before she was my mother-in-law, was my friend and still is today. And I thank God for that. I thank God for the example that I've had in my grandmothers, in my great-grandmothers, godly women. I thank God for the example of a mother that I see in my wife, loving, caring, and understanding. Today, if you don't have your mother, my heart breaks for you. I know one day that day will come for me and I'm not looking forward to it. But today we remember our mothers for those that are gone on. For those that are here, we're still grateful and thankful. And for those that have gone, we are still grateful and thankful. Thank you, God, in your infinite wisdom that you made mothers. Bow your heads. Father, I thank you so much for the day, for your goodness, for your mercy, your kindness, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that when you made a mother, you made a special thing. You made only one for each of us. And I thank you I thank you for the lessons that I've learned at the hands of my mother, for the lessons I've learned at the discipline of my mother, the lessons that I've learned watching her life as people that she loved and cared for have gone on for the example that she is to me, <laughs> the prayer warrior that trusts in you and your healing power who taught me to pray, who taught me to trust. Today, Father, I pray for those who have lost their mothers, that you would allow your Holy Spirit to bring peace and comfort them. And as we rejoice today and we honor our mothers, thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for the wisdom that you've given us in mothers. In your name, Jesus, we pray. God bless you. Thank you so much. And now I'm going to turn you over to Steve to wrap us up for the day. Again, happy Mother's Day. God bless you. Good morning. Thank you for gathering with us to hear God's word. It's a beautiful Sunday. I got to be honest, though. Here lately, this COVID thing... It's starting to wear on me. And I'm losing my patience with a lot of things. I can't go to the restaurant, eat my favorite meal. Can't go to the grocery store sometimes and find what I'm looking for when I need it. Heck, I can't even get a haircut right now. Yes, I am starting to lose my patience with this. And that's not good. But to make a long thought short, I got thinking about patience and, and who has it and how can I get it. Well, the best example is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I personally know that his patience is unbelievable because he's been patient with me for so long for me to get back to church. You want to know something about patience? Get your Bible, Romans chapter 12, verse 12. That should help. But as we go through this week and start to learn about patience and Ride this thing out some more in your quiet time when you're talking to your Heavenly Father, asking for guidance and protection from this virus. And yes, patience. I'll patiently be waiting to gather with you next Sunday. So you guys have a blessed week and be patient. See you. Bye.